Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We're gonna talk about Linux Mint Mate today. As we near the end of this year, Linux Mint is upon us. It's finally gonna be dropped and I am excited to check it out. But before that drops, let's talk about one of the very popular variants of Linux Mint, Linux Mint Mate. So there are a couple of reasons why people use Mate. Number one, it reminds them of the GNOME 2 desktop environment. It's stable, it's fast, it's light on the resources. And so people love Mate. Without further delay, let's dive right in. The moment you log into Linux Mint, you are going to be greeted by this screen. Welcome to Linux Mint. Welcome to your new operating system. The goodies that come inside First Steps, they have changed a little bit. We're going to talk about that, but before that, let's go through some of the documentations. You have help and you can also contribute to the Linux Mint project by either donating or by co uh, contributing to the code base, whatever you see fit. So before diving into the first steps, let's give you a brief overview of the Mate desktop if you, if you are not familiar with it. So on the left hand side, we have the start menu, which in my opinion, it looks beautiful, absolutely like cleanly organized into shortcuts and then you have some things for your system settings and you have lock, lock screen, log out and quit. Apart from that, you have application categories and inside each category, you have all of your applications. You It comes out of the box with LibreOffice, a very capable and competent alternative to Microsoft Office. And if you click on all, you're gonna see all the applications that you have. And apart from that, you also have a favorites bar where you can see what kind of apps are pinned to your start menu. Now you also have a search bar, which in my opinion is very well developed in the Mate desktop. So let's search for something totally random. Let's say dog. And as you can see, not only does it try to search for any packages or any files with the name dog, but it also gives me search results with DuckDuckGo, Wikipedia, and also gives me the option to look up the word in the dictionary. And I can also search my computer for dog. So that's actually pretty good. You can see that I have no files found for dog because I don't have any file named dog, but if it was here, it, it would have found it. So that's pretty cool. So on the right hand side, we have a button for system reports. So maybe something requires my attention. It doesn't matter. I'm running it inside a VM, so it doesn't really matter. You have update manager. This is a very nice tool. This is available in the cinnamon Mate as well as XFCE editions. Update manager has file, so you can go to your preferences. You can set where you're gonna get the options from, uh, like where you're gonna get the mirrors from, uh, what kind of auto refresh schedule you want, the packages. You can even automate some stuff. I'm not an expert on these, so let's just focus on the basics for today. You can install updates from here. There is literally no need to touch the terminal once you are inside Linux Mint, whatever version that be. Now, you also have an audio panel and you also have a small calendar for date and time. So now let's go through this welcome dialog box because I feel like a lot of things are different because this is my first time checking out Mate with you guys. And the last time I did, it was in Ubuntu Mate and that was a completely different experience. And Mate is very customizable, by the way. So let's go through the desktop one by one. First is the desktop colors. Here we can see that we have a ton of options. So customizability is very, very good in Mate. Let's go ahead and let's apply Mint L Dark Blue or Dark Aqua. I, I have a very hard time choosing between, the, between these two. So let's just go ahead with Aqua. And it looks really, really good. Now you have plenty of more themes. You can delete some themes, you can save, you can customize themes. As you can see, even inside a theme, you have controls, window border, icons, pointer. You can change pretty much everything. I would go, I would like to go back to Bibata or Bibata. I'm not, not really sure how to pronounce the name, but I love this mouse pointer and I'm gonna stick to it. You can change the backgrounds. Now they take a little bit of time to load, so there you go. Again, I have mentioned this countless times, but Linux Mint offers an amazing plethora of 
wallpapers. This is what attracts people to an operating system in the first place. Like if, you, if you're new, if you don't know anything about it, you have to be attracted by the looks to find interest in a certain subject, right? So IMO, this wallpaper looks amazing. I'm gonna keep it and you also have fonts and you can also change different things in the interface such as show icons and menus, show icons on buttons and inside file, you can show hidden items, show column size, type column and sort directories first. So you have a preview over here. If you change something, it's going to change, I guess. You also have system snapshots. So you can create snapshots if you, are, if you break something, you can always go back a snapshot and that way your operating system is basically break proof. You also have driver manager to manage all of your drivers if you're running on an Nvidia graphics card or something or if you have some uh, some things like a printer or something where you need to have the drivers downloaded separately that are not included as a part of the kernel then driver manager is for you. You also have multimedia codex so you need to download codex. It actually it gives you the option to download the codex when you first try to install Linux Mint, but if you skip the step, cause maybe let's say you don't have internet connection when you're installing the operating system, you can just launch multimedia codex and you can install whatever was missing. We have already checked out update manager and like it says, install additional software. Do you want to install Mint Meta Codex? I'm not gonna do it right now. Let's see what the description says. All the packages required for multimedia support in Linux Mint. This also includes multimedia support inside of Firefox, which is the default browser that Linux Mint provides. Update manager, we've already checked that out. System settings, software manager and firewall, pretty much self-explanatory. Let's go over them one by one. System settings. Now the system settings in Linux Mint looks really clean. I love how this looks. It gives me kind of an elementary OS kind of feel. And I love that the options are segregated and they're easy to find. You, you cannot get lost inside this place. So you have backup tool, driver manager, some of the things which we've already seen, synaptic package manager, system reports, time and date, so you, get, so you can change the formatting for time and date. I am in Asia, Kolkata, so that's my locale. And inside hardware, you have Bluetooth adapters. You can turn on and off Bluetooth. You can check your, you can manage your, die, uh, your drives and media. You can change your display resolution. Mine is at 1920 by 1080 at 60 Hertz. And you can also change between 100% or 200% scaling. I think you don't really have a fractional scaling, but I might be wrong. Let's move on. And you have keyboard, keyboard statuses, mouse, power management, inside internet network, you have advanced network configuration, firewall, proxies, everything that you might imagine. Inside look and feel, we, you have appearance, which we already kind of checked out a little bit earlier. So nothing new to us. Let's move on. And you have Compiz, Config Settings Manager. Let's go ahead and see what it offers. And it says it's an advanced tool, use it with caution and some options may be incompatible with each other. I'll admit I'm not an expert. So if you are, just tell me what this is because this is the first time I'm looking at it with you guys. And I would love to get to know more about Compiz Config Settings Manager. You can also change screen savers, QT5 settings, welcome screen, pop-up notifications, and a lot of other things. So you can set where your theme, where your notifications are gonna go, top right, bottom left, basically the four corners, and you can also change the theme along with that, and you can enable D&D mode. So that's pretty cool. I love how they have grouped these settings, and I think I spent a lot amount of time inside this control center, but it's really interesting how they do it, and it's really clean and simple. I just love this place. And next is you have the software manager. By the way, before I open Software Manager, there is something else that I should be doing. Since this is a very light Linux distro, uh, at least it's advertised as such. And so I would like to run top, uh, not here, sorry. I would like to run top. Top is kind of a, a terminal based application that tells you what kind of memory that we're using. So as you can see, we are around, 1000 uh, megabytes. So I actually allocated 600 
uh, 6400 MBs to this machine. Now, what a lot of people tell me is that these distros are not lighter, they tend to use a lot of memory. I have a few stuff open up in the background as well as Update Manager showing me what kind of updates I have. So I think it's fair to use one gig of memory, but then again, what I have seen from Windows is that when I had eight gigs of RAM installed, by default, it would take up around two and a half to three gigs. And by the time I upgraded my RAM in my laptop, this laptop, the one that I'm recording on, to 16 gigs by default, it would uh, take up about five to seven gigs of RAM. So it's, it's like spreading your legs and sitting comfortably when you know you have more RAM. So I think dynamic allocation of RAM happens here too. I'm not totally sure, but if you have RAM, like I allocated six gigs, four gigs are free, one gig is used, I think it's totally fair. And so a perfect test for this would be to actually allocate a virtual machine with less RAM, let's say uh, one gig or 512 MBs, which is really not recommended nowadays. But you can actually do that to see if it's using less RAM by default out of the box. So uh, let's not search for top, let's, uh, let's see. This is the software manager and it looks really clean by the way. You have different categories. You have a few banners for the flagship apps. You have Google Earth, which is one of my favorites, GIMP. I use it to make my thumbnails. You have categories, games, so you can install Lutris, Steam, whatever you like from here. And if you are running Linux Mint, by the way, you should be on the Edge version of Linux Mint so that you get the, you get the latest kernel. But if you downloaded the basic version, so let's just go ahead with uname A. Now, what we can see is this is a very old 5.15 kernel. The remedy to that, if you are a gamer, if you're a non-gamer, this doesn't matter that much, but if you are, what you could do is go to, I think, view and then Linux kernels, and it gives you a warning, but it's okay, we can go ahead, we are in Linux land after all. And what we can do is we have to upgrade this kernel, this very old kernel to 6.5. 6.5 probably isn't the latest, but this is way better than 5.15, which is antiquated in terms of gaming in the Linux community. So this is what you would do. You would always have the latest kernel uh, running in the background of your system to be able to play games, especially, especially if you're on Intel or AMD graphics cards. For Nvidia graphics cards, you have to download that separately from the driver manager. But uh, if you are on, uh, but if your graphics driver is available in the kernel, you need the latest kernel. Also, this is pertinent if you have uh, a very modern CPU, right? Yeah, uh, kernel, that's not gonna be a problem, but if you don't wanna update the kernel uh, by yourself, there is something called Linux Mint Edge. You can download the Edge edition and it generally provides a newer kernel uh, at a particular frequency and that solves your problem uh, basically for you. So you have Lutris, you have Steam, you can install any of these packages. It's beautiful how Software Manager actually looks. It takes a little bit of time to load the settings, uh, to load the screenshots, but this is a system package. You can install these. You can see ratings, you can see reviews, and uh, that's it. So yeah, this maybe isn't as fleshed out as something like the Pop Shop or the elementary OS. Uh, software manager. It's not that aesthetic, but it does the job. It has everything available and uh, that's all that you could ask for. So with that, we basically end the welcome section and I think I have covered the desktop pretty well. As you can see, we have a Windows XP style tab layout. This is, this is pretty cool. And you also have three little dots. I think they are a separator. You have a file manager, which is I think Kaha. Gaia, I'm not, not totally sure how to pronounce this. And uh, it's functional, it looks beautiful. The integration with the blue theme, blue theme, the Minty, L, Aqua, whatever I put, it looks pretty good. So this is a first look at uh, Linux Mint Mate. You also have a couple of new things, one of which is Hypnotics. Hypnotics is enabled. Uh, Hypnotics has a few changes, but the last time I checked it out, it basically told me I have zero 
uh, channels and I think the problem still persists. I'm not sure if this is happening to me because I am in India, not in America or somewhere else where you get these, but I used to watch channels on Cinnamon on, uh, I guess, 20.2 Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition. So that's something. Another thing uh, that's enabled out of the box is you have secure boot compatibility. So you, if you're someone who, uh, like me, li loves to dual boot Windows and Linux, then there is no need for you to disable secure boot uh, before going uh, to install Linux. And a problem is if you have uh, Windows 11 by default on your laptop and you don't wanna get rid of it, because I don't, I still use Windows 10 on my machine. That's what I edit my videos on using Premiere Pro. Anyway, let's not digress. So the fact is Windows 11 doesn't even work without uh, a TPM module or trusted platform module. And you need to have secure boot enabled for Windows 11 to boot, uh, to install, to work properly. There are workarounds, but this is the safe way for the normal average user. So this actually reduces a lot of the headache for uh, people who are new to the Linux community and who just want to experience Linux for themselves. Mate is a very, very well flushed uh, distribution, very well uh, polished DE in my opinion. It has a ton of apps. It ships with uh, more or less all the things that you would want. So everything is so properly uh, mentioned over here. And as you can see, uh, over time, as I have used, as I am using this desktop, the memory usage actually reduced to 795 megabytes. And you can also reduce the swappiness, by the way. I'm not, not, not really sure where from where you could do that, but there are plenty of guides on the internet that would help you. So that's something that you might want to do. Okay, so I think with that, this is uh, a fair review of the Linux desktop. And I thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.